and we've also done a new campaign on NutriChoice Digestive. We've done uh, a number of uh, brand activations as well. Uh, we've done uh, uh, bourbon, uh, pure magic views. We've done uh, Little Hearts, uh, NutriChoice, which was an e-commerce activation, uh, and then uh, NutriChoice Nutri Cream Cracker in West Bengal and Assam. Uh, and we did uh, a Tiger Crunch, uh, you know, with Sonu Su. Uh, now coming to the Milk Bikis, you know, Milk Bikis agenda as far as uh, rest of India is concerned. So uh, Milk Bikis has become a, a very, very important brand for us uh, across the country. Uh, Till about a couple of years back, it was a large brand, but it was a regional brand. We were predominantly uh, a Tamil Nadu and a Kerala-based brand with, you know, a little bit of uh, a presence in other states. But now we've uh, decided to take this uh, aggressively across the country. Uh, we've launched a 100% Atta uh, product. Uh, and the proposition is Dood Roti Ki Shakti. Uh, the point really is that uh, this needs to, uh, you know, uh, be a, a product which takes on from not just milk, but also takes on from glucose because from a product standpoint, it's, it's, it's a much better product than uh, any of the glucose products which are available in the market. Uh, while we have a 26% share in the milk category, uh, which is, uh, you know, uh, 105 crores a month or, you know, 1,260 crores per annum. But we only got a 4% share of milk plus glucose put together. Uh, and that's where the potential lies. So uh, we are looking at uh, making this a large brand uh, in the Hindi belt uh, and in the other uh, states out of, uh, you know, the South uh, agenda that we have currently. Uh, we've got a very credible endorser for this in Pankaj Tripathi. Uh, I, I don't know if you've uh, seen this advertising, but it's a very hard-hitting ad. Uh, and, you know, you, you will, if you haven't seen it, you'll see a lot more of it as we go forward. Uh, we've done a very large uh, visibility uh, drive on this. We've got, you know, 14 lakh square feet of visibility across with 45,000 units to be deployed all across the country. So we are looking at this becoming a, a very large agenda for us as we go forward. We've got a very solid brand and we think that we can make a big difference with this. Uh, the other campaigns that we did on adjacent bakery and dairy, uh, you know, the, the Rusk campaign is doing extremely well and that's showing up even in the resurgence that uh, Rusk is seeing as of now. Uh, Wafers, we launched a 10 rupee campaign, which is doing quite well. And Winking Cow, uh, you know, which is an on the go product, but has seen some uh, very, very good results in Q4. It's the highest uh, growth from a, uh, you know, volume standpoint as well as from a distribution standpoint that we've seen in the Winking Cow brand. Uh, next page uh, is uh, page number nine, where, where we talk about the efficiencies. So uh, we continue to sustain the COVID efficiency. So if you look at factory productivity, uh, pre-COVID uh, to post-COVID, which is current uh, productivity, we are 8% better. Wastages, we are you know 20% better than what our pre-COVID levels were. So our wastage is down 20%. Uh, you know, our dispatches from factory directly uh, to distributors are up 50%, which uh, saves us a transshipment and hence uh, brings efficiencies to the system. Uh, our depot space we reduced by 10%, uh, and we are uh, managing very, very well. And that's because we've got direct dispatches, so we can afford to save some, some uh, depot space. Uh, we've created a, a very large uh, digital platform for the future. Uh, so we went live with S4 HANA, uh, our dealer management uh, uh, you know, uh, platform, as well as our vendor management platform. So S4 HANA basically is uh, going to give us uh, you know, a huge efficiency in material resource planning. Uh, we've also got uh, WMS working. Uh, which will give us efficiency from our uh, warehouse management uh, costs. 
as well as uh, you know from a profitability analysis standpoint so hana hana gives a lot of muscle to uh, what we can do with data uh, the plant maintenance system as well as uh, the project management system uh, all this will be provided through so hana which is absolutely a uh, cutting edge erp uh, arteria is the dealer management system that we have which is going to give us real time data uh, it's also going to be a integrated uh, system from a scheme management or discount management standpoint it's also going to be uh, very efficient from claim settlements with distributors and the pricing and promotion controls that we want uh, really strong Uh, within the system so i think it's uh, it's a state of the art uh, you know a system which is uh, you know giving us uh, very good results uh, as we speak uh, in this month uh, from a vendor management system again uh, you know we want to get more efficiencies we want uh, the right sourcing we want digital contracts we want you know a catalog buying kind of approach uh, to you know whatever we buy and uh, finally a life cycle management which uh, the vendor management system is going to provide uh, which will help us cater to the 500 plus vendors that we have in the system uh, the next is about uh, the esg agenda uh, you know the journey began 7 or 8 years ago but now we are doing it in a very very structured way so uh, if you look at uh, you know the, the the chart on page 11 uh the resources part is uh you know what uh, the environment uh, you know that that we are catering to so we're talking about uh, resource efficiency which is water fuel energy uh, and bringing in more uh, renewable energy uh, food waste we are looking at you know re- reducing defectives uh, you know making more uh, making our lines more efficient uh, you know not having expired products and reducing factory wastage as well uh, from a supply chain perspective uh, pharma extension programs uh, sustainable sourcing and from a packaging standpoint making sure that we reduce uh, plastic and whatever plastic we are putting in the uh, in the environment we recycle that so that we are uh, you know uh, we are effectively zero as far as plastic is concerned uh, from a social agenda it's about the human resources and uh, social responsibility uh, so there uh, you know from a, a health safety and well being of our people as well as people connected with us uh, employee engagement uh, you know diversity and inclusion i must say that uh, there is a lot more work to be done from a diversity standpoint but we are working on it very very actively uh, and then uh, community n- nutrition uh, the work that we do through the britannia nutrition foundation etc uh, that that's going quite well uh, you know we also want to make sure that from a economic standpoint uh, we add a, a, a wing to this esg agenda so that the total uh, uh, foods company the global total foods company that we want to be and finally from a governance uh, standpoint we would like to make sure that we are uh, best in the business Uh, so a very nice framework has been created and this will be integrated into our uh, companies and and managers uh, managers performance as well uh, and we will publish our first sustainability report uh, in june uh, of uh, 2021 uh, the next slide is on uh, the britannia nutrition foundation uh, there's a lot of work happening in you know various states uh, including bihar mp uttarakhand gujarat uh, and karnataka which covers uh, 75000 uh, direct beneficiaries of uh, this foundation um, we are very proud of it and we want to make sure that in trying times like this we accelerate this and uh, provide uh, you know the facilities to many more people uh, the next one is on uh, you know are being awarded uh, amongst india's best employers uh, second year in in a row uh, we are very proud of that uh, you know this is uh, something that we aspired for uh, we did it last year but we replicated the same this year as well uh, we want to make sure that we continue with this uh, the next slide uh, ritesh are you there yes i'm there uh, 
Uh, can you just uh, take them through this slide? It's a very sure. important slide. Ritesh is our HR VP, so I would like him to talk about this. Sure, Varun. Thanks. Uh, so our employee engagement uh, and employee support agenda is uh, covered under Britannia Cares, Britannia Cares philosophy. Uh, we have looked at following uh, initiative during the year. As, as the year uh, started, there was a lot of uh, confusion, anxiety, and we launched a, 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 a continuous feedback system, uh, which is an AI uh, chatbot, uh, which covered about 2,000 plus uh, of our employees. And the key concern that was talked about was physical and mental stress that our employees were going through, as well as there was a lot of fear and anxiety in their mind. And it was important to provide them the holistic wellness as well as a sense of belonging and community so that their fear and anxiety can subside and they also get support, uh, especially on the mental stress side. Uh, so we looked at uh, a holistic wellness program uh, which was uh, looking at all the four aspects of wellness which is physical, emotional, social and financial. Uh, for physical we started with providing uh, medical support, medical concierge desks were created, uh, the doctors were made at level 24 by 7. Uh, there was also nutritionists provided as well as, uh, as physical activities were limited so we started with the digital physical uh, fitness Friday. We provided employees on how to remain uh, fit even when they were in the lockdown. Uh, most importantly, I think what employees were looking at at this point of time was uh, the emotional, the mental stress that they were going through, the anxiety that they were going through. Uh, so we started Pan India Counseling Services and we also launched a few training programs around uh, emotional resilience where we uh, also involved ex army guys to talk about how they uh, dealt with uh, similar tough situations and how uh, they were resilient in those situations which was quite inspiring for the employees and uh, we also provided expert uh, connect uh, doctor calls doctors talking about what to expect and also dispelling some of the myths that they might have uh, which which helps calm down their nerves uh, we do run a volunteering uh, program uh, which Varun talked about as part of BNS as well and we continued that uh, even in this year uh, combining it with virtual as well as uh, lot of distribution uh, that was required for the migrant labor during the year. Uh, so we organized programs like health challenge to address malnutrition. We participated in that as part of uh, global program that was being run. We also took employee uh, contribution drives where we tried making small stuff uh, uh, for uh, in partnership with the NGO. Uh, but most importantly, we made sure uh, to provide biscuits and hot meals. So we cooked uh, hot meals around our factories and uh, provided uh, in whichever location it was possible and it was a need uh, to the authorities uh, and uh, helped migrant labor uh, with the hot meals as well as uh, we supplied uh, food uh, and the kit. So that's what we did at uh, around holistic wellness, uh, taking care of complete wellness. For building sense of belonging community, we had digital connects uh, that were organized. Uh, there were town halls uh, with leaders. Uh, interventions were uh, not limited just to the employees, but this situation also provided us to connect with the family members. Uh, we also focused on children uh, because uh, a lot of children were uh, looking at uh, being engaged and parents wanted support on that. So we were able to organize some of those programs as well. Uh, so those are some of the initiatives which were taken to bring in the sense of community and belonging. Uh, the other actions which were uh, taken were uh, we have by and large in our offices continued on work from home uh, mode with some flexibility so our offices were open for some time and uh, whichever function or people needed to work uh, they could come in uh, at their convenience. Uh, we also created cross-functional self-help group uh, at each of the region uh, which could help uh, employees in 
in in tough times like we are going through currently uh, and where these groups are actually helping employees with uh, whether it is beds whether it is medicine whether it is oxygen and obviously providing comfort that yes there are a set of individuals on behalf of company who are working at this point of time to support them uh, the leaves that people couldn't utilize last year were carried forward and we also created a bcp plan in our bangalore office by creating alternate offices uh, these were more focused on offices uh, for uh, specific functions so manufacturing and sales where we have the largest of our workforce we made sure uh, that a proper covid protocol was developed and uh, bcp was developed Uh, so that we take utmost care on hygiene standards uh, to ensure that our employees are not infected by covid uh, so a proper health screening was done the touch free attendance was uh, launched covid sensitization sessions were held with the employees uh, temperature monitoring was introduced uh, the transport was provided with one third occupancy and uh, proper uh, uh, a quarantine policy was uh, done and in in a case where if any of our employee was infected with covid the proper tracing of primary contacts and making all of them uh, in isolation and in quarantine for 14 days was strictly followed uh, even on travel we followed all the state regulations which were there similarly for sales we have done similar thing Uh, wherever possible which is uh, managing even work from home uh, whenever there has been surge even today uh, we have taken the decision to work from home even in sales uh, because of the surge that we see currently uh, and we are doing uh, we are, we had done it last year also we have done this year also we have extended insurance to our third party employees as well going up to aw salesman to ensure that uh, if if they need any of the insurance help we are there to provide them with that support uh, as of now as as we move forward and we are all facing the uh, wave 2 currently uh, we are uh, pushing for vaccination of all our employees and we have managed to cover 76 to 80% of our eligible employees which is 45 plus Uh, and we are gearing up to ensure vaccination for uh, employees below 45 years of age uh, starting from first may uh, company obviously is going to cover for cost of vaccination vaccination for all employees as well as third party employees again going up to the uh, distributor salesman uh, and yes we are trying to target uh, to cover all our employees uh, to vaccination uh, in in may Uh, so these are testing times and things are changing every day and we are quickly able to uh, modify our responses uh, to meet with the challenges back to you varun yeah no these are very very tough times guys and uh, you know it's it's been very very tough i think not just for us but for most businesses uh, but uh, we are trying to cope with this in the best way possible and keep up employees safe from the conditions that exist okay moving on to page 16 uh, which gives the revenues uh, so revenue growth for the quarter has been 8% um, and it's trailed off from you know what it was uh, you know the first three quarters uh, but uh, you know it's uh, uh, the volume growth is uh, at 8% as well so uh, you know we uh, the, the time has come for us to look at how we going to take this uh, back to uh, a double digit growth as far as volumes are concerned uh, and revenues are concerned now moving on to the next slide which is about cost efficiency programs uh, last year we had uh, uh, you know a big uh, incentive coming our way because there was you know uh, 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 between uh, the vat and gst there was some confusion so there was some Uh, extra incentives that we got uh, for 1920 so we had a one time gain but for the last uh, you know 3 uh, 4 years we are at about 4.6 4.7 times uh, what we used to do in uh, 13 14 so uh, that's what we've done so we are on plan as far as cost efficiency programs are um, commodities uh, it's it's been uh, fairly stable as far as flour and sugar is concerned 
you've seen a huge inflation as far as uh, edible oil is concerned and uh, on milk while versus last year uh, you know same quarter it's not uh, inflationary trend but uh, versus the last uh, three quarters it's it's inflationary on uh, on milk so um, which takes us to the final slide on uh, profitability uh, so we've got a profitability of 17.9% for the full year um, for Q4, it's 14.9%, uh, which is, uh, and I'm talking about the operating profit, consolidated operating profit, which is better than last year, uh, but it's uh, below uh, what we had for the first three quarters of this year. Uh, the reasons for that, uh, one is uh, the inflation from Q3 to Q4, there is approximately 100 crore inflation. Uh, second is uh, the normalization of our advertising and sales promotion uh, you know, budgets. Uh, we had uh, some savings as far as that was concerned because we didn't have enough stock in the first half of the year. Um, now, the inflation is leading us to a, uh, you know, uh, a situation where we would uh, you know, have about 3% inflation, uh, material inflation which is basically coming from uh, edible oils, uh, dairy, uh, packaging material, and as well as the price increases which have happened in fuel, uh, which is diesel. So uh, there's a 3% inflation that we are seeing, and uh, that's something that we have to mitigate as we go forward. Um, that's, that's all from me, but uh, just one more thing. The fact is that uh, with a 17.9% uh, profit margin, uh, we, we keep doing a benchmarking versus other food companies in India and uh, you know, worldwide. And it seems that we are in the uh, you know, above 90th percentile of uh, profitability. We are amongst the most profitable food companies. And uh, the interesting thing is that we are the most we are amongst the most profitable food companies in the world uh, by operating in uh, categories uh, predominantly, which is a low gross margin, uh, you know, uh, category compared to any other uh, food category. So I think it's it's something to be really proud of, and I think this team has done a fantastic job in taking us to this level. So that's it from me. Um, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may please press star then one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star then two. Participants are requested to use hands while asking a question. Anyone who wishes to ask questions, please press star, then one. The first question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Um, hi, sir. Uh, thanks for this. Um, just wanted to understand, uh, take it, you know, from your last comment on the 3% inflation. Uh, have we taken any pricing change since to kind of take care of this uh, or what are the thoughts to kind of uh, offset this going forward? Uh, uh, so we started price. pricing action, but uh, we will have to sort of, uh, you know, as you would have noticed, our, uh, our volume growth and our revenue growth are the same. Uh, so yeah. versus uh, the, the fourth quarter of last year, we haven't got any pricing, but towards the end of the quarter, we've taken some pricing. Um, and we are confident that uh, as we get into the year, over the months, we'll be able to uh, get that target of 3%. 3% is not over the top. Mm -hmm. um, while it, it, it is a large number, but I think with uh, you know, choosing the right brands as well as uh, the right uh, SKUs, uh, we should be able to uh, take that pricing from the year perspective. So, so the, the comparable, when we kind of get through to 3%, the comparable gross margin would be the 3Q number that we would kind of aim to reach at on a cross level. Would that be a fair way to look at the business? Uh, well, you know, the, there, was, there was a lot of efficiencies there, which, uh, you know, uh, 
which we might not be able to replicate. So I won't be able to give you uh, a number for where we will get to, but uh, the objective is that we would want to be uh, certainly above uh, where we were in uh, 1920 as far as uh, margins are concerned. Uh, this year has been exceptional for, from a margin perspective, but uh, we should certainly uh, aim for a higher margin than uh, what we achieved in uh, 1920 and what we've achieved in Q4. Okay, perfect, sir. Uh, so the second bit was essentially about this near term. I mean, there is clearly a second wave out there, which is, uh, you know, um, in that context, could you kind of give us how are the consumer demand trends and also the competition trends versus what we saw in the last lockdown? Uh, any comments on that, sir? Thank you. No, so the, the trends are uh, similar to what they were last year, but the only mm -hmm. thing is that the world has uh, gotten used to uh, living through a pandemic. So um, I think uh, people are better prepared, uh, and I'm talking about producers. So producers are better prepared to manage their workforce, and you know factories have not been locked down like they were last year. So uh, from that perspective, I think uh, there is a, a better awareness of what needs to be done. Uh, however, there is uh, uh, some amount of uh, pantry loading. Uh, there is some amount of trend towards home consumption products. Uh, and uh, that, that, that I think will continue because I, I don't think we are going to come out of this situation uh, in the next uh, you know, three or four months. Uh, it seems to be that uh, this year's uh, COVID uh, situation is worse than what it was last year. And so the competitive angle would then not be the same in terms of that favorable, the unorganized impact were, that we had seen last time. Uh, that would not be the same as because you said they are much more, you know, the production side is much more uh, ready. Is that a fair uh, reading from what you read of your statement, sir? Yes, I, I think so. I think people will be uh, better prepared, but trends like uh, people going back to their most trusted brand, etc., will will uh, remain. So uh, we, we have to see how this pans out uh, as we go through this. Uh, frankly, uh, you know, these times you can't uh, say what's going to happen tomorrow. Well, every day the situation changes. And, you know, we've lived, lived through last year with so much of uncertainty. We don't know, you know, how the next month is going to be, the next week is going to be. So the best thing is to remain uh, on one's toes and do what is best uh, to uh, further the business and, uh, you know, cater to the consumers. Perfect, sir. Uh, and a bookkeeping question, sir. The ICT is on book, uh, it's, uh, and you know, to the promoted entities, if you could just share that number, that's all from my side. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't hear the last one. So the ICD is on book, uh, as on FY20, uh, FY21, and uh, you know, to the promoter entity, if uh, you could share those two details. Thank you. So this is the bookkeeping. Yeah, so the first group ICD or to yeah. Bombay Dying and Bombay Burma. And they continue to be in the same range again. Uh, same range is at 520, sir. Uh, correct, sir? Uh, no, the number will be 30 crores or so. Okay. And the total ICDs would be also flattish, sir? Has been overall, yes, sir. All yes. 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 Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in this conference call, please limit your questions to two per participant. For any further questions, you may come back for a follow-up. The next question is from the line of Richard Liu from JM Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for taking my question. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I, I just wanted uh, to ask you more about uh, you know, the very quickies uh, strategy. Uh, I, I can't hear you properly. Can you just uh, come a little closer to the uh, speaker? Uh, yes, Varun, is, is this better? Yeah, this is better. Uh, yeah, Varun, I just want to talk to you about, uh, you know, this milk the keys uh, strategy. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, a, a lot of work would have gone into it, uh, you know, be before you identified this brand to be rolled out nationally, etc. Uh, but, uh, you know, I just quickly ran through the pricing of, uh, of, of milk bikis, the non-cream variant. I'm not, I'm not talking about the cream biscuit, I'm just talking about the normal milk, milk bikis. Uh, 
the pricing seems to be very very close to what Parley G sells at. And uh, if I if I if I if I go back in time, I remember, you know, you and uh, and, and ITC uh, basically, you know, the, the uh, both of you together, other than Parley, had always stressed on premiumization as an agenda for uh, you know for for the category going forward. Uh, when you when you are looking at uh, you know at a big bang. Uh, you know, launch or relaunch of a brand or an extension of a brand, uh, you know, to, to really now, uh, you know, go and target the Parley G segment, uh, especially when they are selling at very close to each other in terms of price point. Uh, are you going reverse on the, on, on the premiumization agenda? And, uh, you know, I, I know there'll be scale benefit, et cetera, et cetera, but from an overall GPM perspective, uh, how should one look at, uh, look at the their- person you are speaking with has and 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 related to this, uh, related to this is that uh, you know that if if you're looking at uh, you know at at, at growth, uh, you know by 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 going into uh, you know into a segment which is actually sub premium, uh, is is it an indication I that? I get your question in uh, in in the you know interest of time. Let me just clarify. Uh, it is not uh, at the same price as Parle uh, Parle G. It is at a sub, uh, you know, a sufficient premium to Parley G uh, in terms of pricing, and you got to remember that Milkbiki is one of our most profitable brands. It is, in fact, our most profitable brand, and we would like to keep it that way. So there's no uh, thinking in terms of, uh, you know, how we we'll, uh, uh, wither away the profitability. We will certainly build on the profitability as we go forward. Okay, thanks. That's helpful. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prasad Deshmukh from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, so, uh, first question is on capacity. Last year, you had announced a capex of 700 crore uh, to be spent over two to three years. Uh, just wanted to understand how much has been spent in FY21 and what is planned for 22. And uh, follow up is uh, what is the current uh, capacity utilization? So we've got a very uh, small head space as of now. We've probably got uh, you know less than 10% head space uh, in terms of capacity. Um, but uh, we 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 were we were supposed to spend uh, you know last year's capex was about 200 crores. So we uh, underspent uh, last year, and uh, even this year uh, because of the uncertain circumstances. Uh, we will, while we are uh, definitely going to put up a factory in UP, uh, we've already, uh, you know, contracted the land and, you know, we've already got the incentives from the government. Uh, similarly, uh, Tamil Nadu, we've got, uh, you know, the uh, we've signed up the agreement with uh, the Tamil Nadu government. We've uh, outlined the land. Uh, so all of that is done. Um, and similarly, uh, Bihar and expansion in Orissa is... Uh, on the cards, but we will take these steps uh, as and when required. Uh, so if it if it uh, means that we require it uh, six months earlier, we will do that. If if it means delaying it by six months or a year, we will do that. Um, the only commitment this year that we have is uh, you know uh, on our dairy factory, which uh, also uh, you know will be ready in uh, 2022. So uh, we will play this by the ear, and uh, we will put capacities uh, depending on how uh, the situation is on the ground. But we are committed to uh, putting up these factories. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So just a follow-up there, then what is the current third-party manufacturing as a percentage of uh, uh, total? And, uh, uh, I mean, do we see in the meanwhile if, uh, uh, if there are a couple of quarters like last year, I mean, Q1, you had 26% sales growth. If a couple of quarters are there where pantry upstocking is there, then do we see the third-party manufacturing going up? Yeah, so it, it need be, but uh, as of now, it seems that uh, you know uh, we we have enough capacity to. Uh, we've expanded a few a few lines we, uh, during the last year. We put up a few lines in Ranjanga. We expanded capacity in a few places. So uh, with that, I think we'll have enough capacity. But yes, if required, we will uh, look at third party. But at this point in time, uh, our third party uh, number is uh, Vinay is about 35 percent. Okay. Okay. So and second question on international, uh, what is the uh, plan for international in FY22? 
in the current uh, uh, context, COVID context. So uh, we uh, are looking at uh, starting up uh, two factories, uh, one in uh, Egypt and one in Uganda. Uh, these are not our assets. Uh, these are uh, contract uh, factories that we set up uh, through our contract manufacturing partners in these two countries. And we will use these uh, for the country itself and uh, countries in and around uh, so that we can, uh, and these are, you know, reasonably, uh, uh, this, 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 for, for example, just to give you an example, the factory in Uganda is capable of giving us a turnover of about $11 million and the one in uh, Egypt even higher than that. So uh, these, these could become, uh, you know, hubs for us to uh, create businesses in these uh, regions. So uh, th that's that's the plan for this year as far as international is concerned. Uh, besides that, uh, we are looking at uh, entering more uh, countries uh, through our export model uh, and establishing ourselves in those countries. Got it. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Mangala Malu from CNBC. Please go ahead. Hi, Varun. Uh, this one is your thoughts a little more on you know, the way the first order is gone. When you say that the situation is similar to the last time, do you mean the COVID situation or do you mean the demand situation? Because at the same time last year, you saw a near 20 percent spurt. Of course, that a large part of that was also a spillover from uh, the previous quarter. But this time around, is it a lot more normalized? Uh, what is the sense that you're getting? So, uh, uh, Mangalam, we don't share uh, the numbers for the next quarter, but uh, we definitely see uh, a surge in demand. Uh, it, as I said, that you know people are more organized, and uh, last year we were uh, first among equals in terms of making sure that we hit the ground running. Um, this year, I think everyone's smarter, uh, but there is uh, definitely a surge uh, because of uh, the situation that we face on the ground. And what's your sense on the industry itself? The last time you said that, you know, whenever things settle, you would still be 300 basis points better than what you were in COVID. Uh, has that number changed? Uh, 300 basis points better on what? Uh, over pre-COVID levels is what you had said earlier, that, uh, you know, the normal state demand post-COVID will still settle 300 basis points higher in terms of volume growth. Yeah, so we, uh, uh, as I said, Mangam, we can we can make as many forecasts as we want. Uh, you know, this this economy and this uh, situation on the ground uh, takes a life of its own, and uh, clearly uh, our forecasts, uh, you know, are not as accurate as we think. Uh, I do think that uh, the, the demand situation is going to improve uh, as we go forward. We've seen. Uh, the second half of the year to be fairly slow, I guess. You know, once uh, the the uh, you know uh, the situation on the ground became better, uh, there was the impact of uh, the economy. Uh, you know, as as people had uh, you know suffered during that time, uh, that that came to uh, roost. But I think uh, slowly and steadily over the next two or three quarters, I think situation is going to become a, a lot better. Uh, from an eco economic standpoint. And hopefully we will get back, uh, not just to these booms and busts, but uh, a regular life which uh, takes the demand back to where it used to be, uh, single, single digit high, single digit uh, category growth. And if you're getting shared, then you can get to a double digit kind of a growth. That's the situation that we uh, hope to get to soon. Right. Just a quick follow-up on that. You know, when you said that you believe that consumer sentiment is likely to revive, etc. Uh, your thoughts on the way the consumer sentiment is currently? Because uh, some time ago, we did have a word with uh, R.S. Sodi, and he did say that, you know, lower consumer incomes is, is beginning to tell on demand. Uh, do you see something similar? We saw it in the second half of last year. Um, but... Um, you know, uh, these are these are all necessities. These are not uh, high value items. So I guess it's it's a short term uh, impact which uh, slowly withers away. 
So we are hoping that, uh, you know, as things become better, uh, people will get back to normal consumption. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Good luck. Okay. The next question is from the line of Aditya Soman from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good evening, uh, and thanks for your presentation, Warren. Uh, so, uh, just uh, uh, back on milk bikis. Now, one of the things we also noticed in your presentation was that the number two player uh, has uh, gained market share at least sequentially. Uh, so, uh, would this, to a certain extent, uh, uh, this extension of milk bikis just be uh, a product to counter uh, uh, counter that market share gain in in the indie belt, or uh, or is uh, and would sort of parlage be the main target? Uh, and and just to add to that, uh, when we think of the market share gain by parlay, has it uh, been in parlay G uh, uh, or has it been parlay G that drove that market share gain? Yes. So their gain is parlay G. But that's not the point. The point is not that, uh, you know, we are just looking at, it's not like we are targeting Parleji. Parleji is too large for us to target. We are just looking at the market and we are saying that is there uh, a potential to upgrade the consumer uh, who's at the base of the pyramid, who's consuming, let's say, Tiger or Parley or, you know, any of the other glucose biscuits uh, to get to a product which is, uh, you know, Atta, which is, you know, got a good proposition like Dood Roti Ki Shakti, uh, you know, which resonates really well uh, with a, a Hindi belt consumer. Um, and uh, if, if there is a premium, that's fine. But, you know, if, if we can provide a product which is uh, tastier than the base product and it's also uh, providing some benefits uh, versus the base product, then can we get the consumers to upgrade? So that really is uh, our objective. And if you think about it, if you combine those two segments, we only got a 4% share. So even if we were to take this 4% share to 8%, we are talking about uh, a big number, right? So uh, so it's not, I don't think it's going to impact Parleji. Uh, yes, there's the big, big daddies out there. So, uh, you know, in, in ratio of their share of the, uh, share of that segment, uh, they will get impacted to, a, to an extent if we are able to make uh, the inroads. But we are yet to see. I think we've got a very good proposition. Uh, we've got a great product. Uh, we've really worked hard on making sure that we uh, get the product and the proposition working in conjunction. Um, and we are hoping that we'll be able to get uh, you know, the right kind of effect from the consumers as well. Uh, no, thanks, Warren, for that uh, answer. Uh, so just a follow-up there. I mean, uh, in terms of uh, contribution or net contribution, uh, what would be the difference between, say, Tiger and the keys for you, if you could just tell us the index number? And secondly, in terms of price point, uh, would this be at a similar price point uh, at which Parley G is? Maybe the grammage is different, but the price point would be the same, right? Yes, the price point will be similar, but grammage will be lower. And uh, the the uh, gross margin would be uh, two and a half times what uh, it is on glucose. Very clear. Thanks a lot, sir. Yeah. Thank you. We would request participants to please limit your questions to two per participant. For any further questions, you may come back for a follow up. The next question is from the line of Kunal Vora from BNP Paribas. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, on the three digital transformation projects, uh, would you be able to help us uh, quantify the impact on uh, revenue as well as cost uh, during the quarter? Uh, yes. Uh, Venkar, would you like to answer that? Hello? Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh... Quantifying will be a little difficult at this point in time, uh, but certainly we are looking at uh, every critical lever uh, that it can help us on, right from um, order generation to order servicing to uh, maintaining lower inventory in the company, reducing write-offs and reducing um, market returns, etc. So the the Functionalities that Varun spoke of, uh, they address all of these. And we have some numbers as targets for each one of this. Uh, but we are going to monitor this and uh, 
we will have to ensure that uh, you know these benefits come through to the company but you seem to have fill fill rate because you know uh, today we have gaps in our fill rates as well so with our new dealer management system i think uh, our fill rates will also definitely go up um and uh, you know our ability to analyze and provide the right data to uh, our sales force for them to uh, make the right uh, decisions on the ground uh, that will also be impacted but we got some targets internally uh, we will monitor those uh, you know on a regular basis and make sure that we uh, get some efficiencies uh, uh, you know to the to the business but i can tell you this the, the extent was not large uh, the savings can be very very large okay and the revenue impact this quarter was not meaningful is it like that was in that no so the revenue am impact because because of this we uh, had to close our quarter uh, about 3 days in advance because uh, we had to go live and you know factories had to be shut and the stages had to be shut so uh, that created a little bit of an impact but yeah you no know, that that's a very small impact which uh, you know is, is, is not a, a secondary impact but a primary impact uh, for us Sure. Okay. And uh, just one more question. Uh, can you share your thoughts on uh, PLI on food processing and whether you expect to benefit from this? Also, do you see this helping your international business, or whether there can be some benefits, uh, additional benefit for your Anjan Gao plant? Whether it's there can be something in the domestic side as well. So, if you can just share your thoughts on uh, uh, PLI on food processing. Yeah. Uh, PLI has still not been, as you know. officially announced uh, but ready to eat food is covered under pli scheme and uh, biscuit is also covered under biscuit and uh, most of the other products that we are manufacturing today are also getting covered under pli based on the draft that government has shared so far we are hopeful that it will go through and uh, we should be able to quantify as and when government is able to come out with a Uh, finance scheme, but there will be benefits that should accrue to companies like Britannia. So, fair to assume that uh, both domestic sales as well as international plants will could see some benefits. Yeah. So the draft says that uh, domestic, of course, there will be the benefit. Uh, it also says that to the extent they are manufactured in India, subject to certain conditions uh, being fulfilled, will also be eligible for. benefits over and above the incentive they are talking about uh, uh, reimbursement of some of the expenses on advertisement that can also so there could be some benefits for the ranjan gaon so there could be some benefits for the ranjan gaon plant as well because it's a work in progress right now or it will be for the new project so it will apply for britannia as a legal entity the way it is worded currently understood uh, that's it from my side thank you sir thank you The next question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks, uh, Varun. Uh, my question is on distribution. So, because of the wave two, uh, again there is a lot of pressure on the shelf space in Kirana. So, again, is any SPU rationalization required? And similarly, chemist shop, uh, home and personal care companies are targeting quite uh, well, given uh, chemist shops are open for longer hours. So, is there something you can do there in the chemist shop? Uh, well, at least the the point is that in times like this, uh, we are actually uh, you know uh, asking our sales people not to go to the market. So uh, again, we are going to see a, a downtrend as far as our distribution is concerned. There will be a lot more uh, you know uh, sale on telephone, and there will be a lot more wholesale uh, trade during this time. but i think uh, and it's unfortunate because you know you build your distribution and then something like this happens and you have no choice but to uh, you know uh, trade on the side of caution as far as your employees are concerned because this wave just seems to be uh, a very very vicious wave of covid it just seems to you know we, we as we speak we lost uh, three of our sales colleagues Uh, because of covid and uh, all three of them were young 
and you know as i speak to other uh, counterparts in other companies every company is facing the same problem so what we've done is we've uh, told our people not to step out of the home uh, till this happens we don't care if you know distribution drops we will work harder and build it back but this is not the time to think about uh, targeting outlets and putting our products this is about making sure that we produce uh, our products and uh, you know send them to the distributors and send them to the wholesalers so that we can keep the shelves uh, you know full uh, as we get out of this situation then we'll start to fine tune once again and start to look at which outlets and what outlets and how do we uh, target them etc but you're right from a long term perspective uh, it seems uh, like a good strategy to go after chemist shops currently it will be negligible right for you yes it will be uh, small uh, we do have uh, some of our products like beauty choice which are uh, available but uh, not not for the main line products arun my second and last question is on the three uh, digital projects so uh will the uh, benefits start immediately after the wave two so can second half of the year uh, see some tangible benefits from this and uh, does this give you a lead over the number two player uh, because they are uh, more of a uh, mass player so uh, uh, will it be in industry leading in terms of uh, these uh, capabilities no absolutely uh, i will let uh, venkat comment on that uh, but yes uh, to my mind it definitely will uh, give us uh, an advantage over uh, all our competitors and the the trick will be in making sure that we uh, you know uh, deploy this efficiently and monitor it and you know uh, reap all the benefits that uh, we you know put put on the paper that we uh, you know made on this and we were uh, starting to conceive this idea thank you Venkat, hello. Uh, Mr. Venkat Raman, please unmute the line from your side. Sorry, sorry, I I, I missed the question. Sorry. So, so on these uh, three digital projects, uh, uh, is, is it a big lead over the number two players specific and the industry in general? So, in terms of capabilities, uh, uh, when do you see this uh, benefit coming in? Tang tangible benefit. so uh, no uh, as we speak we are able to see the benefits uh, frankly uh, you know 20 lakh outlets uh, real time uh, data in terms of what they are buying from our distributors and that getting converted into orders on a daily basis by end of the day uh, from the depots is something that we are able to see right away okay uh but it will take little more time for this to uh completely get converted into uh top line and bottom line benefits to the company which i think is a matter of few quarters in my view because some very large systems have to be established in uh every single uh, factory and depot so those are uh, you know, while they have all been implemented we have to do it on the ground so that is something that in my view will take a couple of quarters and one small follow up on this uh, so primary billing i don't know if i missed this uh, primary billing what was the impact and will it get reversed in say q1 or q2 so we we uh, like uh, varun mentioned we had 3 days of uh, shutdown that happened for the transition to happen that happened in the month of march so but the secondary reversal yeah so secondary is continued so you know logically it should happen okay okay that's all from me varun thanks a lot thank, thank you. you the next question is from the line of shirish pardeshi from chandran capital please go ahead yeah hi varun good evening uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, i just want you to understand uh, in this quarter and uh, taking a queue of whole of fy22 uh, and uh, i think uh, you started saying that uh, the uh, there is a cautionary uh, things happening in the market because of pandemic but would you give us some sense uh, how the category is performing because uh, you have taken a lot of action so the reason why i'm asking is that 
uh, if things are going to be all right in the second half of FY22, your uh, new product favorite agenda can come back and can you give us some journey, some roadmap, how we should look at FY22 uh, in terms of uh, top line? Well, I won't give you a number on that, but what I can tell you is that last year, uh, our innovation agenda was uh, not as strong as we would have wanted it to be. Uh, and for the right reasons, because, uh, you know, it was important to uh, decide on your priorities and, you know, go full out on uh, producing products, <clears throat> which were the mainline products. But, you know, as we get out of this pandemic, I think uh, we are also itching to get back to our innovation agenda. We've got a pipeline of products which we've been working on for quite some time, and we would like to get that uh, out in the market. So I definitely feel that, uh, you know, once uh, we are uh, in normal times, God knows when those normal times are going to come. I had someone asked me last March, uh, when is it going to be normal? I would have definitely said that it will be normal before before it actually is becoming normal. But <laughs> uh, think about it. It's already, already 15 months, and we still don't know when normalcy is going to be back uh, in the system. So uh, let's hope for the best, but uh, clearly, um, you know, as things uh, get back to normal, we will have a lot of ammunition to uh, take us back uh, into a, a very different playing field. See, the reason why I'm asking, uh, uh, and I need some answer on that, uh, if you have that growth agenda uh, with the new product, uh, would you give us some sense uh, where we have uh, settled uh, for our ad spend in FI21 and what should we look at in FI22? So uh, we don't give, uh, uh, you know, forward-looking uh, growth. So I would not like to comment. And frankly, uh, I don't think there's anyone in in the world who can comment on <laughs> what what's going to happen. Yeah, in FI21, Maybe. if you can share. FI21? Yeah. The year which is what that mean? So what, what 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 do you want to know about FY21? How much we have spent as a marketing uh, spend, uh, advertising and marketing? So I'll, I'll I'll take that. Uh, the the yeah. spend that we have done in 2021 has been roughly 1.5 percent lower than of let's say lower than uh, the previous years. However, we started coming back to the normal level in Q3. And we did a little more than the normal levels in Q4, if that answers your question. Wonderful, uh, Sini. Thanks. Uh, this last question, uh, uh, right, uh, we have raised some 700 odd crores to CP uh, in uh, last one and a half months. Uh, would you be able to help us to understand what is this uh, money we, we have read through commercial paper? So this is essentially for, uh, because April to June happens to be our commodity buying season. And uh, you will see this as a pattern every year between Jan and April is when we will start doing this. So wheat buying happens from April to June. And uh, this is essentially for the commodity buying. Essentially for the commodity buying. Okay. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Varun, and all the best to you and team. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Ms. Deepthi Sudhir from Batana Industries Limited for closing comments. Thank you, Stanford. Thank you to everyone for spending time with us on this call. We look forward to interacting with you again. Good night. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Britannia Industries Limited, that concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.